Okay, here's the uh, layout for the model sheet for uh, 3D model construction, as well as the measuring of the wire skeletons that go inside for the armature for actually uh, you know, creating the skeleton and getting a good pose for this character. So what I'm doing right now is I'm correcting a few things. Uh, first things first, the feet. If you did your feet with any sort of perspective, you want to flatten those feet out. And what I usually do is redraw it off to the side a little bit from the back of where the heel is, where it touches the ground. You see the blue foot there. The uh, So what I'm doing is I'm marking where the toe swoops upward. That's why I kind of drew it that way to begin with. I wanted this kind of little curl, almost like an elf boot at the tip of the toe. So I'm drawing those out, and when I measure the wire, I'm going to measure as if the feet were sticking out sideways. But when I bend the wire, I would actually bend the wire back forward uh, for the feet facing forward, not the feet uh, facing out sideways. You could do the same thing with the hands. You could lay the hands out uh, with the palm forward. You could lay the hands out with the palm backward, whatever, as long as you're laying them out flat so that you could get a good measurement for the fingers. Now I'm taking a, another piece of tracing paper and I'm just taping it over the top of it. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take a black pencil. So I'm just really dark and clear. I'm going to mark uh, my landmarks. So uh, I think actually this one's going to be my side view. Let's see. Uh, oh, by the way, this is sped up. Uh, it's uh, going at uh, tw double speed. So yeah, I could kind of push through here. Yeah. All right. So this is the side view. And so, you know, the uh, corner of the diaphragm, the navel, the crotch, the knees, the elbows, the chin. So, yeah, there we go. There's a side view. Uh, bottom of the chin, the nape of the neck where the collarbones, where the clavicles come together and mark in there. Also mark where the eyes are. So whatever you need uh, to measure across uh, the head measurements we would do after we lay it out to the side you could do it beforehand too so right now i'm just doing a little side view of the face i have not worked that out yet for this little sketch this original drawing you see up above is only a couple inches tall so I'm taking a two inch drawing and i'm starting to turn it out and decide now this this is where doing conceptual sculpture is really fun uh, if you're an illustrator and you're already at that level with 2d to represent 2d drawings um, then great, but 3D is a lot easier. Here I'm doing the uh, barrel chest uh, angle for the uh, torso, as well as the forward bend wedge shape of the pelvis. And then I'm doing the S shape. So I'm doing that forward S of the thigh and then the back uh, S of the calf and then bringing out the bottom of the foot. So the foot for this character behaves a lot like a boot. And then I'm marking uh, the shoulder uh, socket where the arm's going to come out from the torso. You can see right there, I, I drew it a little bit too high, so I was erasing it. Okay, so that's my quick side view. This is literally as much detail as you need for your characters right now. You don't need anything more detailed than this to get started. You're just kind of blocking in. You've decided on the basic shape of your character, uh, the torso, arms, neck, and head, hands and feet. There's Nixie. Studio kitties, they love jumping in here. I look, I uh, consider it the familiar helper of the uh, process. Okay, and then up here, I'm kind of deciding, like, what's the space going to be between uh, this kind of head shape I'm going to design and then this, you know, umbrella, sombrero, um, hat, you know, farmer's hat, whatever design of this mushroom cap, how it's going to sit on there. So I'll kind of work that out as I go. I might end up shaving a lot of that top of the head part down to allow for the center of the mushroom cap head to be thicker so it can rest on there. But the main thing is I want the armature wire to stick out from this inner part of the skull so that there's a little post to then set the um, cap on and take it, be able to take it on and off so I can work on it separately. Okay, so I'm just taping on some tracing paper. So this part here, now I have the side view. I have a front view with the basic shapes. And now I can go in and mark where the armature wire is going to go. So I'm kind of figuring it out from both views. 
if there's a severe forward neck lean, like let's say this was a minotaur or something like that, and the head was really slanting forward a lot, you want to mark, you want to add that to your measurement. And yeah, Nixie's helping out again. Um, so that way, if you're drawing the wire distance in the front view, um, and I always start with the torso and just go from the navel up to the chest. So I'm drawing like a little U shape inside of here. And the U shape allows you to uh, draw the shoulders. And I want to be accurate and straight here because these, if these get off a little bit, this can really mess up your pose, right? So I'm kind of taking my, slowing down for a second there. And then I'm drawing a little dot where my bends are going to be. So uh, at the elbow, the back of the elbow, up at the shoulder. And that little U shape is going to allow us to attach the wires going to run from hand to hand. That's one wire. And then the other one's going to go from the feet up to the torso to the head. So, uh, and then to draw a little loop at the hand, I ended up redrawing that hoop bigger to go down closer to the knuckles. Uh, later, you'll see that uh, when I do a different color draw over. And now I'm looking at the top of it. This is that post I was talking about. So I'm going to put that post and I'm going to have it stick up um, outside that kind of uh, little part of the skull, if you want to call it that, the skullish part where it almost looks like a little beanie on his head. So um, there's not enough room. So yeah, I'm going to end up shaving that head down so the post sticks out more. And then now what I'm doing is that there's a hoop for the hand. That's like the, the palm or the spatula shape of the hand. Um, there's also a hoop or loop drawn for or a bent in typically for the head. I think I ended up not putting one in on one of them and I did on the other. But uh, that usually will keep the head clay from falling off and you can wrap that with uh, aluminum. Okay, the hips will go out and you want to really get that joint correct where the hip socket will be. And you also really want to be careful just like with the knees or with the elbows that the knees are in the right spot. And that, um, you know, I'm going fast, a little sloppy here. So I got to catch myself as I'm going and make sure these are accurate. And put a cattail in there if you can yeah so going back and marking on the bends and where that post is going to be so that's where i'm kind of thinking okay i'm going to shave that head down a bit to allow that post to stick out uh, go well, at least a half an inch and then erase some hair off the cat's head okay then from the knee down to the <laughs> to the heel <laughs> and then off to the side i want to go from the heel outward and get it right around the ball of the foot. There we go. Now, the lines coming out from the side, those are going to be hoops as well. You just can't see the hoop from the front view because it's going to be flat. So I'm going to draw that out to the side and mark that and make sure that uh, when I'm bending the armature wire, when I measure out the armature wire, that I leave enough armature wire to create a hoop for both of those feet. And that's going to give you a nice little spatula shape for the feet. And now I'm just kind of um, marking again where all the bends are going to be. Now I'm going to mark how the wire is going to be connected and twist. So I'm going to bend the wire in half and twist it down. I'm going to get down to the hips and then twist it <laughs> out for the feet some more as well. So I'm just kind of marking that for you guys so you can see. That's for myself. Uh, then you bend the hoop around and you're going to twist and curl it up around the uh, arm through shoulders wire. So that's going to be twisted up and coiled. Uh, I'll do that by hand because uh, it's so small. If he had uh, bigger arms, if this because his head, the cap is so wide, I made him shorter. So it's not just giant sculpture. It's going to weigh you know three or four pounds. I'm trying to keep it lighter. So his arms are really short. But if his arms are bigger, I would. Uh, or if he was taller, his arms would uh, require bigger wire. Okay, and then you also, uh, you can include uh, in your measurements for your wire when you're joining it, you can uh, snip the hoop off at the toe, at the feet, and actually run that wire down through the back of the heel to go into the wood base that you have. So that's going to be up to you in your pose. Do you want that wire to come out from the heel, or do you want the wire to come out from the ball of the toe or tip of the toe? So um, I'm just kind of giving you options here. And then I'm going to mark here with the red marker. Uh, I'm going to put a nice thick ball of um, steel stick on there. And you'll notice up at the shoulder area, it the red mark where the steel stick is does not go 
and cover the round portions or the bending angles uh, for the shoulder down to the chest up to the clavicle to the corner of the deltoid. That's because you want those shoulders when you're posing your character. If you're slouching the shoulder forward or rearing the shoulder back, it needs that flexibility. Uh, also down around the hip, you'll see the steel stick does not go out and touch the dots at the um, corner of the hip. So that's going to be a solid steel stick. There's so I'm just marking that for you guys so you can see where that's going to be. And then I'm taking a thicker marker and I am reminding myself and, um, and putting some notes here for you guys where it's going to stick out. So where we're having wire stick out from the actual sculpture, you want to know where those posts are. Okay, so that's pretty clear. We're coming to the end of this. This should be enough to get you guys started. And um, I'll we have a few other videos already done. And then um, we're going to do the top view. Yeah, that top hoop of the foot is easy to forget when you're measuring your armature wire out. So you want to mark, mark that clearly and draw the approximate size of that hoop would be fun. Now, I could take a breakaway drawing and actually draw that side view of the foot and a top down of the foot as well as the hands do a palm forward like full like layout for the hands and be done with that so i have a little sample this is a huge sculpture that was going to be this is the mirror golem you can see I actually made extra sculpture uh armature wire for the sculpture for the toes it has tie downs so this is a this is an actual stop motion puppet that would be animated and um you can see where the clay is on the torso there. So uh, let's see if I can pause this for a second. Yeah, so you can see uh, I added steel stick. There's different colors. I had different types of steel stick over a period of time with this guy. And you see the hoop on one of the arms. When I bent the, uh, when you bend that hoop back in, you need to attach it. So this is a good example. This would be the mirror golem. I'm going to actually glue a bunch of pieces of uh, glass and mirror on there. So it's that actual reflective puppet. Uh, that could be animated. Okay, and that should just about wrap it up. This is uh, measuring out the armature wire for your character.